In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create the perfect interior panorama in Photoshop CC. In a recent post on my website, I've demonstrated which gear you need and how to set it up in order to shoot a high quality panorama image. Um, now, even if you have great gear and you set it up perfectly, um, it is still a challenge to apply these techniques to an interior panorama because of the specific um, problems that you're facing with uh, objects being very close and maybe very distant to your camera. So you may encounter specific problems and some artifacts in these kinds of panoramas and I'm going to show you how to solve these problems inside Photoshop. So here we have three images of an interior scene that we're going to use as sources for our panorama. I've got them, them open in uh, Adobe Bridge here and I'm going to select all three of them and then go to the Tools menu and choose, choose Photoshop and then Photo Merge. Now that will start Photoshop and it will open the Photo Merge dialog box. And in here you have several options. On the left side you see the layout um, di um, section here where you can choose between different types of panoramas. Now what we're doing here is actually a cylindrical panorama so I could uh, choose this specific layout here but Photoshop is very good at detecting which type of panorama you, uh, you have been shooting and so leaving it in auto mode will produce great results most of the time. So I'm going to leave it in auto and um, here in the middle you see the source files that I've selected and sent over to Photoshop and down here we have three additional options. The first one is to tell Photoshop to blend the images together. Photoshop essentially has to warp all your images so that they fit together perfectly and then it has to blend them so that you don't see any seams and that's what you're telling Photoshop with this option. So you, you should leave this ticked. The two options beneath that is um, vignette removal. So if you have a wide angle lens, it could be that you have um, some vignetting from the lens itself. And in some cases it is beneficial if you remove this. Um, you also get geometric distortion if you have a wide angle lens or an ultra wide angle lens. But I'm going to leave these two unticked and I'm going to check and test if Photoshop is able to stitch these uh, properly. If it's having problems, um, using these options would be one way of, of tackling these problems. Okay, so I'm going to click OK and Photoshop is going to load all the three images and then it's going to try to blend them together seamlessly into the final panorama. Photoshop has now finished blending our images together and you see the typical panorama view here with the warped images that are put together using layer masks. If you look inside the layers panel here you see our three layers with a layer mask um, and you also see those seams in the um, in the preview area here. But this is only a display issue so you're not going to see seams in the final image. Um, the first thing is anyway that we're going to, uh, to merge these layers together. So I'm going to select all of them by clicking on the first and then shift clicking on the last layer. And then I, I right click on any of the layers and I choose merge layers. And that's going to put all of them into one layer and you see that those seams have disappeared here. Now the first thing that we need to do in order to correct this type of image is to correct the distortion that um, Photoshop has, has introduced inside the image. And by distortion I mean that objects that are actually on one visual line in the actual scene have now been moved up or down for example or there has been a slight rotation in the image. You can see this in these lamps here both of these lamps should be the, the exact same height but they're not and that's due to Photoshop's attempt to, to warp and deform the images in order to, to make them match uh, where they overlap. 
And now we're going to correct this. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to drag some guides onto the image. Um, in those places where I find that these virtual lines that need to be connected um, and they need to be the same height appear. And the way I'm going to do this is first I'm going to make the ruler visible. I have the ruler visible right now, but if your ruler is not visible, just press Ctrl and R and you will see these rulers at the top and at the left side of your image. And then just click and drag to create a new guide. And I'm going to create a few of these guides in specific uh, positions so that I have good control over the distortion and the correction of the distortion of my image. I'm also going to create some for the vertical direction before I'm going to head over to the transform tools to correct this distortion. As soon as you've created these guides, you can start the transform tool. And you're going to do this by pressing Ctrl and T on your keyboard. And you see that this box appears around your image area with those handles. And those handles let you um, deform and uh, transform this box so that the inside, the, the actual pixels of the image, follow this transformation. Now let me zoom out here a little bit so that I have some room for this transformation. And then I'm going to right click on the image area and I'm going to choose distort. And that's going to let me move any of these handles here individually. You can see that I can move this handle up and by doing so I'm going to bring the base of this lamp here to the same height as this lamp. And you're going to have to to do this with a few handles and maybe repeat it because each time you're grabbing a handle and moving it um, you're actually transforming the entire image. I'm also trying to get the space here lined up. So this looks quite good but I think we still have some rotation issues here. I have to recreate these guides because the images, the image pixels have moved. So I can't use the guides that I've created. And now I'm going to right click on the image area again and choose rotate. And then you can use your mouse to rotate the image any way you wish. Okay, and I think this looks quite nice. The lamps are the same height. The base of this arch is the same height. The steps of these stairways here are the same height. And I'm going to, to press return in order to apply this transformation permanently to the image. Now that we've corrected the, the overall distortion of the image, we can remove the guides. And I'm going to do this by going to the view menu and click clear guides. Let me zoom this in. And um, there is another type of artifact besides the overall deformation of the image that we have to correct. And that's um, stitching errors at those places where the individual images were blended together. You remember those seams that we've seen where the, the different layers were blended together? Those are the places where stitching areas, uh, errors can occur. And if you zoom into these areas, you see that in this image we have at least one, actually it's three, one, two, three stitching area errors here, where you see that this arching line is discontinuous. So it, it stops here and it starts over here, and that's exactly where the seam between the two images was. Now, you can fix this by using a technique where you copy a part of the image and then use the transform tools again. And I'm going to show you how this is done. Um, in order to do this, I'm first going to pick the lasso tool and I'm going to make a selection of this set of lines that we have here. And I'm going to start all the way up here because I'm going to try to transform these lines so that they actually meet each other where this uh, where they break up here. And you see that 
I was very carefully in trying to uh, let this selection end exactly where this, the, the error occurs here. So now I've got the selection and I'm trying to um, transform this to make things match again. In order to do this, I'm going to press Control T again, and that gives me a transformation of this um, area alone. But before I do this, there's one more important thing that I need to do. I need to copy this to another layer because we only want to transform this area that I've selected here. And now I'm going to um, select this new layer, activate the transform tools, I'm going to click inside the area and choose Distort. And then I'm going to grab this handle here. And I'm just dragging the transformation box to a point where, where I see that these two lines are now matching again. I'm going to press Return. And if I disable this new layer, you can see the effect here. I've just in a sense, I've bent this part of the image so that it matches again. Now you see that we've got some um, visible uh, differences here in, in brightness in these areas that I've transformed now. And there are several ways you can um, cure this. You can, for example, try the, uh, the spot healing brush. Make sure that you click the sample all layers because that means that Photoshop is going to look at the pixels below and is trying to um, to consider all the pixels of your image when it's going to um, apply the spot healing. I'm going to make the brush size a bit bigger and then I'm just going to brush over the area where this, the the problem occurs. I'm going to make the brush just a little bit bigger. And I think that already did a, a pretty good job on this side here. Now this is a bit more problematic. In this case I need the clone stamp tool and again I'm going to choose sample all layers. I'm going to make the, the cursor a bit bigger. And now I'm going to select a point close to this um, problem area here, right on this line. I'm going to press the Alt or Option key, click here, and that has uh, sampled this area. You can see a small preview in the, inside the cursor. And now I'm going to uh, move the cursor right above this area where the problem is, and I'm going to brush. And that's going to nicely cover up this area. Okay, so I think we're good in this area right now. Let me show you the before and after. This is the before with the problem here with the artifact. This is the after where we fixed this with the transform tools, the spot healing brush and the clone stamp tool. Another thing that I'm going to, to correct in this panorama here is the symmetry. I'm going to zoom out again and um, with this type of panorama it is very important that um, both sides are really symmetrical to the center line of your image. In this case we really have a, a symmetrical building with a corridor to the left and a corridor to, to the right. So it's important that there's no uh, offset on either side of this image. The first thing that I'm going to do um, to make this perfectly symmetrical is that I'm going to add a bit more space on the left and right side. And I'm going to do this with the, with, the, with the crop tool because the crop tool is not only, can not only be used to remove areas of the image, it can only also be used to add additional space around the image. And the way I'm doing this is I'm holding down the Alt or Option key on my keyboard and I'm dragging this right handle and you see that on both sides we get additional empty space around the image. Now the next thing is that I'm merging these layers here and I'm making a copy so that when anything goes wrong I can go back to the original uh, image here. 
Now I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to make a selection of the left side of this image. And whenever you make a selection, you can hold down the spacebar to move it while you're still dragging with your mouse. And what I'm trying to achieve here is that this selection is perfectly lined up with the middle of the image. And I'm correcting this. The middle of the image is this chain here where the lamp is hanging. And I've just transformed my selection slightly to do this. And now I'm going to copy this area of the image and paste it. And that puts it on a new layer. Then I'm going to go to the Edit menu and flip this um, new layer horizontally. And now you're probably thinking that I'm just going to mirror the one side to the other to make it symmetrical, but that's not my goal here. What I've just done is create a template, so to speak, that I'm going to overlay on the right side so that I can transform the right side only and make it exactly fit the proportions of the left side. In order to do this, I'm going to add a photo filter so that I can distinguish these two parts of the image. I'm going to make this really green and I'm going to make it only affect this part that we've copied now. And the next thing is that I'm going to lower the opacity of this. And you can see, now there was the, the wrong layer here. I should have um, chosen the image layer and lowered the opacity. And you can see that these two sides, the overlaid mirrored left side and the, 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 the actual right side are not the same. You can see that there is an offset here, for example, in the lamp. And what I'm going to do to cure this is I'm going to use the marquee tool again. I'm going to make a selection. Oops, that didn't work. I'm going to make a selection that goes all the way to the middle. And let me zoom in here again. And I'm going to use the transform selection tool again in order to make this really end right at the middle of the image. And now I'm going to select the image layer and I'm going to use the transform tool once again. And you can see that this now creates this, uh, this box around the selection that we have. So we're not going to transform the entire image, but only the right side of the image. And the goal in doing so is to make these two things, the overlay that we've just created and the actual image match. And you've seen that we've squeezed the right side together so that they're now pretty much the same, the overlay and the actual image. I'm going to apply this um, transformation and I'm going to hide the, um, the overlay. And now we have a perfectly symmetrical image here. The next step is to correct the way in which Photoshop has squeezed our image in, in the in the X direction. So the width of this panorama should actually be larger than it is right now. And you see that when you look at the um, original image here, the arch has kind of a different shape. You see the top of this arch has a different shape than the one that we have in the stitched area. Doing this is easy again. We're going to use the transform tool and I'm going to hold down the alt or option key and drag this right or left handle and I'm just going to drag out until I have the impression that this is, these are the right proportions as they actually were in the, in the scene. I'm going to apply this, this uh, transformation and now the image is pretty much corrected. Of the, of the correct size, correct rotation, correct transformation, and it's symmetrical. 
And now we can move on and do the cropping. Because as you see, the edges of this image uh, are still quite um, wonky here. And so we have to crop the image in order to correct this. I'm going to just move on these, move uh, these crop handles inside the image. I'm also going to make sure that these parts of the wall that, that I have on the right and the left side are not in the final image. And that looks just about right. Now there's one other thing that I want to show you. Let's say you want uh, as much as you uh, can have of the upper part of this panorama. And in that case, as you see, the corners start um, becoming a problem here because when you move up so that you get these shadow areas, for example, here at the top of this arch, um, you're going to include some of the background in your image. And you can also fix this. Now let me zoom in here. And doing this in this case is very simple because we have a quite homogeneous um, area here. So we can use the Content Aware Fill tool. And I'm going to just um, draw a selection around this area that includes this part where the background is shining through. I'm going to go to the Edit menu and then choose Fill. Make sure that the Contents drop-down says Content Aware. Mode is normal, opacity is 100%. And if you click OK, Photoshop is going to fill this area perfectly. Now let me scroll to the other side and do the same thing here. Edit, fill, content aware, and Photoshop does a great job again here. Now we're pretty much done with our image. Um, what's missing are a few basic adjustments like uh, a bit more contrast, a bit more color. And I'm going to um, add these. I'm going to add a levels adjustment to make sure that the contrast is nice. I'm going to add a curves layer to make targeted adjustments. If you're using this hand icon here, you can drag and drop anywhere in the image. If you drag down, the, the specific um, area of tones is going to be um, bent down in the curve. And when I grab this highlight area here and drag it up, you see that it's going to get brighter. So that's a way of, of visually applying a curves adjustment. I'm also going to try to improve the saturation just slightly. And the very final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a vignette. And there's no native way, no tool in Photoshop that lets you add a vignette. But there is a little trick that you can try. And to do so, you first have, have to create a marquee selection just inside the edges of the image. And the inside of this marquee selection is going to be um, as bright as it is now, and the outside is going to be darkened, and that's going to create the vignette effect. And when you have this selection, just go to the Layers menu and create a new fill layer with a solid color, and make this fill layer black. And now the inside is black and the outside is not black. That's not what we want. That's the opposite of what we want. So I'm going to invert this. And then finally, I'm going to go to the Properties tab, Make sure that the mask is selected in your, in your layers palette. And I'm going to feather this um, mask. And you can see that it gets a very, very soft edge up to the point where you cannot really distinguish where the fill layer is and where the image starts. So you don't see the, the transition between these two. And finally, I'm going to set the opacity a bit lower so that we have a just some darkened edges for a nice vignette so that the eye of the viewer is drawn into the image. That's it for this tutorial. You've seen that you can create a perfect interior panorama by correcting all the little mistakes and artifacts that appear 
through the stitching process. Even if you have perfect gear and a perfectly set up panorama head, these types of, of stitching errors can happen. And you've seen that you can use a simple, simple transformations, for example, to cure these problems.